Hey guys, welcome to Coding Spot and welcome to part 4 of this tutorial on how to do Google's tic tac toe. So, in the last video, we managed to draw our game figures, so both circles and crosses, and I actually want you to feel good about it because that was the most challenging part of this tutorial, in my opinion, guys. In this video, we'll be checking if a player wins and we'll draw the respective winning line. Also, I think we're gonna do a restart function for you to play the number of times you'd like. And yep, I think this will be the last video of this tutorial. Maybe I'll do one more where we can organize a little bit our code, but definitely if you watch this video and you've seen all other videos, you're going to have an awesome, awesome, awesome game. You can play against friends, family, even yourself if you want. And yep, let's start coding. Okay guys, so I want to start this video by declaring our remaining functions. So let's go down here. First function we want to create is going to be the check win function. It's going to receive a player. And as you can imagine, it's going to check if this player wins the game. Next function, we're going to call it draw vertical winning line going to receive a column and a player and it basically draws the vertical winning line. Next function is going to be the draw horizontal horizontal winning line is going to receive a row and a player player Um, we also want to create one for the diagonals. So draw, I'm going to call it ASC for ascending diagonal. It's going to receive a player. And we want to do one for the descending diagonal. Diagonal. It's going to receive a player also. And the last function we want to do is actually our restart function. So restart. So those are the functions we're going to code in this video. But before we do that, I want to quickly explain you something. Okay, guys, so I want to explain you how are we going to check a win and how are we going to draw its respective line that you'll see it's pretty much the same. So let's say we want to check a vertical win. Uh, we have three options for that. This one, this one, or this one, right? So what we want to do basically is loop through all of our columns. So we have our column number zero, column number one, and column number two. We want to loop through all columns, checking if that column, if the numbers of that column are the same, but they are different to zero, right? Because we know zero represents that the square is empty. So that's why the function draw vertical line receives a column. We're gonna pass a column, let's say one, and we're gonna draw a pi game line. Let's now say we wanna check or draw a horizontal line. So it's pretty much the same logic as the one the vertical line uses, but instead of looping through the columns, we wanna loop through rows. So we have our row number zero, row number one, row number two, and we want to loop through each row to check if all of its squares are the same, but they are different from zero. And that's why the draw horizontal line function receives a row as a parameter. And lastly, we want to check and draw both of our diagonals manually. So we're basically going to check if this square is the same as this one and as same as this one, and they are all different from zero in order to draw the line. And we want to check for the ascending diagonal if this square is the same as this one and as same as this one, and they are different from zero in order to do the ascending diagonal line. Okay, guys, so hope that's clear. We're going to start by checking a vertical wind. So let me first put a comment vertical win check 
And as I showed you, we want to loop through all of our columns. So for call in range board calls. And we want to check for each column that all of the squares are equal to player. And player is going to be equal to one or equal to two. So we want to check if board in the row zero in the column call is equal to player and board in the row one in the column call is equal to player and board in the row two and column call is equal to player. So if that's true, we can go ahead and call our draw vertical winning line. And we need to pass a column and a player. So the column will be the column in which we found that all numbers are the same and player will be just player. And we want to return true. So by returning true, we are just breaking the function and we are not going to check for the other possible wins. So let's now create our horizontal win check. Let me put the comment horizontal win check. And we want to do basically the same, but instead of call, we're going to use row. So for row, range board rows. And we want to check if board in row column equal to zero equals player and board in row column equal to one equals player and board in row and column equal to two equals player. So if this is true, we want to draw our horizontal winning line by passing our row and our player. And we want to return true. Let's now go and check our diagonals. So I'll start with the ascending one. So ascending diagonal win check. And we want to do this manually. So if board in the row two and the column zero equals equals player and board board in row one and call one equals equals player and board in row zero and column two equals equals player. We want to draw our ascending diagonal by passing the player and we want to return true. Let's now go and check our descending diagonal win. So this one is the easiest. So it's basically board in zero zero equals player and board in one one equals player and board in two two equals player. We want to draw our descending diagonal by passing player and we want to return true as well. Okay, let's now draw our winning lines. But actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and return false right here. Because if we reach here, it, it is because there's no win, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our vertical winning line. So I want to start by saving in a variable our line's x position. Because as you know, as it's vertical, a x position is not going to change, right? So I'm going to call it pass x and we want to type call times 200 and remember 200 is the squares size and this multiplication is basically going to let us be right after the column we want to paint the line but we don't want to be after we want to be in the half so let's go ahead and add a squares half so that will be 100 and we have our position X. Now we want to check if player equals one. And if player equals one, we want to create a variable called color and set it equal to the circle color. And if player equals two, we want to set color equal to cross color. 
So this will make our line the same color of our player, or our player's figure. Now we wanna create the line. So go ahead and write pygame.draw.line. We wanna pass the screen. Then we wanna pass our color. Then the starting position is going to be our position X, comma 15 more or less. And our ending position is going to be position X, comma the height of our screen, minus 15. And the width we are going to use 15 more or less. And we have our vertical line ready. Okay, let's now complete our draw horizontal function. It's actually pretty similar to this one. So let's go ahead and create our pos y variable instead of the pos x. And let's type row times 200 plus 100. And again, we want to check if player equals 1 to set color equal to circle color. And we want to check if player equals 2 to set color equal to cross color. Now let's go ahead and type pygame.draw.line. We want to pass our screen, our color. For starting position, we are going to put 15. So same 15 than here. And pause Y. And ending position is going to be the width minus 15, comma, pause Y. Pause Y. Width is going to be uh, also 15 and it's done. We have our draw horizontal winning line function. Okay, let's go ahead and complete our draw ascending diagonal. Uh, I'm gonna copy this because we'll need it. Go ahead and paste it. And let's type pygame.draw.line. We're gonna pass our screen, then our color. Starting position is going to be 15 comma height minus 15 and final position is going to be width minus 15 comma 15 and the width is going to be 15 as well. Okay guys, let's go ahead and complete this function. So let's paste this if statement and let's type pygame.draw dot line we want to pass our screen our color starting position is going to be 15 comma 15 ending position is going to be width minus 15 comma height minus 15 and the width of the line is going to be 15 as well so yep we did it guys we should now see a line being draw when a player wins in any direction so what we want to do now is actually call this check win function in our main loop. So we want to call the function right after a player marks a square. So right here, check win with player, and right here, check win with player. And you need to make sure this function is right before this line of code because we don't we don't want to pass the other player to our function, right? We want to pass the current player. Okay, so we actually we need to do one more thing, but I'm going to save and run the, the app for you to see what happens. So I'm going to save, I'm going to run. Okay, so I'm going to try to win. So I'm going to win with the whites. So as you can see, we have a line displayed. Awesome. But look what happens. X also can win. And that's because we need to we need to stop the game whenever a player wins. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay guys, so what we want to do is to create a variable. I'm gonna call it game over and we're gonna set it equal to false. I'm gonna call it like this, but you can call it however you want. And we need to set these variable to true whenever a player wins. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna put if check win, cause remember 
these returns true or false depending if the player wins so if check win player uh, we want to set our game over variable to true right here we're going to do the same game over equals true and now what we have to do is go right here to this if statement and put and not game over so basically we just coded that when a player wins the game over variable is going to be set to true and if the game over variable is equal to true we cannot enter this if statement because not true will be false and as you know anything false is not gonna execute so basically we will stop um, the game so let's go ahead and run for you to see it okay so i'm gonna do what i did last time i'm going to win with circles and i'm gonna try to win also with hex as you can see i'm clicking right here and nothing happens so that means we did it and we're now doing the restart function okay so let's quickly do this the first thing we want to do is paint our background again so screen.fill we're gonna pass background color then we want to draw our lines so we call our function and we also want to set our player equal to one again and we want to make our console board full of zeros so for row in range board rows and for call in range board calls board where is it board in the row and the call equals zero so that's it and now we want to call this function in our main loop okay and we want to do the following so outside of this if statement we want to type if event.type equals equals pygame the key down so we're basically checking if the user or the player clicks a key now we want to check what key he pressed so if event dot key equals equals pygame dot k underscore and literally you can choose whatever key you want i'm gonna go with r because the function is restart so if he clicks the r key we want to restart we want to call our restart function and that's all it's pretty simple so go ahead and save and run and i'm gonna try to i don't know i'm gonna do whatever okay so i've made the board full now i'm gonna press r and as you can see we managed to restart our game go ahead and do it you can do it whenever you want so i can do it here or here and it's correctly done guys we did it okay guys so i think it's the end of this video i'm not sure if i'll be making a fifth part but if i do it will be only for organizing and refactoring a little bit our code so nothing super important just a video to make our code nicer and yeah i, I really hope you like this video and learn something new throughout this tutorial so if you did please 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 leave a like comment and subscribe if you haven't already because there will be much much more tutorials as this one much more cool content and yeah i'll see you in the next video